what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel as you guys can see we're messing with the junker tahoe one more time um the previous video i'll throw it uh up in the screen should be floating around somewhere up here but uh we lowered the rear end and uh, i'm gonna start well, actually started lowering the uh front end already so i'm gonna just kind of walk you through uh what all needs to happen essentially give you an idea and um so first things first you know obviously you take your tire off after you jack up the car this and that that's the basics uh you will need to remove uh your brake stuff uh rotor uh, brake pads caliper um there's a little bracket here that will hold the brake caliper so take that off as well that will be mounted up here it takes two 18 uh, millimeter bolts and then um, you can uh, remove the caliper all the way out then next uh, there's gonna be a bracket here holding your uh, brake line in place and it also holds the ABS cable so ABS um, speed sensor wire here will be routed up like so back up here into the uh, engine bay so there's a plug up here right above your uh, shock mount on the top side so disconnected from the, uh, the clip up there there's a couple other clips here um, get that out of the way and then um, your brake line has this bracket here that needs to come off of the uh, spindle and another one up here on your uh, A-arm that needs to come off. I'm going to put the hardware back in the A-arm just so I don't lose it. And uh, what I've done here, just kind of took the caliper and uh, strapped it out of the way. I don't want to remove it all the way out because uh, I don't want to have to bleed the brakes. So. What I'll end up doing once we're going back together, um, I'll essentially clean that up, re-grease the pins, and assemble it back together. So these uh, all these steps are not in any uh, specific order. Um, for this one, I do recommend that if you can get this off after you take off the center cap on your wheel, take off the cover. You will have your axle nut and a washer behind it. The axle nut, you will need a 35 millimeter socket and uh, this one is a half inch drive so that makes it a little easier get your axle nut out of there if you can do it with the the wheel still on the ground this one's gonna be on pretty tight so um, you know it, it would be easier to do it with the wheel on the ground uh, if not you're just gonna have to hold the, the hub somehow um, next we're gonna move on to um, I'm gonna start loosening all the hardware up here for the a arm on the top side so that'll be a 21 millimeter for the nut and for the bolt side and a, a 21 for the back as well and um, I'm gonna be replacing the a arm the spindle uh, I've already replaced the hub assembly and I'm gonna try and reuse this uh, tie rod seems to be still in decent shape um, I am gonna replace the sway bar links uh, the bushings are all shot coming apart so you can see here so uh, those have to go and uh, more than likely I will have to replace the lower bowl joint here all right guys I got my 21 millimeter socket I'm gonna take this hardware out of there um, one thing that needs to happen before the forward bolt comes out is a brake line bracket it's gonna be in the way I'm not 100% sure that uh, whoever put this bolt back in put it uh, put it in the right way but uh there's a 13 uh, holding the bracket in place 
so take that bolt out of there and we can uh, move the bracket up and down as we need to to get this uh, bolt out of there and um, the back side there's nothing in the way so we can just pop that one out now uh, before you take off the bolts themselves either get you a paint marker flathead screwdriver something to give you a reference on where the um, alignment keys are uh, that way you can kind of have a baseline on where things are um, try to keep your alignment in you know decent shape before you go to the alignment shop so all right so turns out that uh i was wrong on the back one uh the shock uh, strut will get in the way so uh what i'm gonna do is take off the shock strut as well because i'm gonna replace it anyways um now you will need a 21 mil down at the bottom as well and I'm gonna get the knot out of there. But um, if the hardware is uh, still tight, you can get your get your jack underneath the uh, axle here, spindle, whatever you gonna call it, and then jack it up slowly until the bolts loosen. up. yep, just like that. Bolts loose. Reach in there and grab it, and then I'm gonna. Get that out of there. So now the shock itself is out of the way. We can grab the top bolt. It's kind of hard to do it one-handed. Um, I do like to keep everything together. That way uh, I'm not looking around for it later on when I go to put all this stuff back in place. Now, okay, so there's that. Now, once you lower the jack, everything is gonna drop a lot further down because um, the shock isn't holding anything anymore. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, calm down. As you can see, things in here are a lot lower. Um, I didn't think I did forget to mention the tie rod. You will need a, it's a size 18 for that guy. So try not to do too many rotations. So whichever position you take it out of, kind of let it be. And then um, you will need to remove this lower uh, bowl joint nut. Um, forget what size this one is i think it was a 24 25 let me see this is a 24 yeah, it's a 24 size 24 down at the bottom uh, i am not going to remove it all the way out and i will show you why so take it out to where you can still feel the stud and the uh the nut at the bottom it's kind of flush and then um once you have your uh, upper hardware removed from the A-arm, we can uh, pop it out of place, get your pry bar and snag it out of there, hammer, whatever you need to do to slide it out. Alright now, so after you remove your A-arm from your mounts up there, again, you don't have to follow any sort of particular order. Oh wow, you can see this bowl joint is actually doo-doo. Um, pretty, pretty far gone, I'd say. But uh, next we need to pop the uh, spindle out of the uh, lower bowl joint. And, uh, I mean, you can get fancy with it. You can get special tools, this and that. 
just gonna use a hammer and bang on it till it comes loose so uh, I do recommend you put a jack underneath it kind of keep it in place um, you don't have to but I, I prefer to put the jack underneath to kind of hold things tight so let's get to it Alright, uh, just like that, you feel a drop. I'm gonna take off the jack out of it. And then, uh, this is gonna be quite heavy, so make sure you're holding it tight. Get your axle out of the way. I'm gonna throw it up here on this. Uh, sway bar as uh not out of there and just like that you're free oh yeah look at that oh nice and so you can see this uh lower bowl joint isn't really helping us out anymore so I'm gonna be swapping that out and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Wow. Definitely seen better days. Look at that. One finger. My air is moving that thing now. Lower ball joint. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, cleaning up the surface. Take a wire brush through the uh, ball joint and lower A arm surface there. Simply because uh, I don't like working on dirty areas especially we can't see what's going on so take a wire brush get all the the loose stuff out of there take some brake cleaner so here we are i'm gonna pull the lower bowl joint i got this uh bowl joint kit from the old auto parts store it's pretty nice actually they'll let you rent them out and whatnot um whatever you do and however you want to do it that's really up to you so many ways to do this uh, i'm gonna use uh the easiest way that i find it for me at least so find your cup that fits the bottom side like that obviously try to keep the stem in the hole and obviously this is going to hold back on the lower side and then we're gonna need something to press on the top side because these have to get pushed down so the only thing in this kit that fits the top side is this guy um, or the uh, the rod itself I'm gonna start with this and then as we pop the bowl joint out of there I'll probably take it out and use the stem itself so let's get to it All right, so you guys can see it started coming out of there. So I'm gonna remove the top hat. We no longer need that guy. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the, the screw itself. Keep pushing it out of place.
done. We have the new bowl joint. Uh, pretty good quality for you know being an old car quest. Um, it's nothing fancy really. Uh, it does come with uh, new hardware, new nut here, um, new grease fitting, new lock ring. Um, but yeah, so uh, once you get the old one out, clean up your surface. You know, uh, make sure it's nice and clean for the new uh, ball joint to slide in place. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention, these will have a uh, grease fitting. So when you go back in place, make sure the grease fitting is facing back or uh, the front. No, it's a lot easier to grease it. Uh, you don't want it facing you because you'll never be able to get to the grease fitting uh, later on. So that being said, uh, let's throw this bad boy in. So I've got the ball joint kind of in place. Uh, if you find it kind of difficult to hold everything in place and uh, line up the ball joint so you can see the grease fitting is on the back side. Uh, line it up, give it a couple of uh, love taps at the bottom here. Nothing crazy, just so that it stays in place. And then uh, get the, your tool set up and uh, finish driving it in place. Cool. Now, before you actually start driving the ball joint where it needs to go, make sure all your uh, cups are seated, uh, you know, somewhat flush all the way around here on the bottom, on the top side as well. Make sure your screw is uh, seated into the uh, the top majigger. And um, another thing that I like to do is move your clamp either to the back or the front side in this case i'm going to the front side because i'm turning to the right so uh that'll kind of stop it from moving as i'm turning so it'll have itself to stop essentially uh, yeah let's finish driving this thing home Right at this point, I can't turn anymore, so uh, that's a sign that you should be fully seated. If you look in here, uh, there's really not a gap in there, so and there you guys have it. It's actually a pretty quick process, and you can see this thing won't really move very easily, so that's what you're supposed to see, not that whole, you know, flippity floppy stuff um, next we're gonna put the lock ring in place and the grease fitting in place so let's get to it throw this nut in here just so I don't lose it for now so to get the lock ring in place you can get the uh, lock ring pliers and 
do it that way or you can just get the one end started here and just essentially rotate the ring over and just hold it in place and slowly press all the way around make sure that it goes in place like that and then boom you got a lock ring on there um, the cert fitting where are we there we are so this guy uh, make sure your cert fitting is sent jacked up make sure there's nothing in the hole and then uh start threading it in there i don't know if i can do this with the gloves nope i'll take the gloves off there we go so there we go start that pretty easy in there if you can do it by hand do it by hand um once you stop you might need to do another half a turn quarter turn so i believe that's a 5 16 uh, socket so we'll get that run down and then uh we can start building up the rest of the the stuff here we have the old uh a arm uh spindle hub assembly so on the back side it's going to have three uh 15 millimeter bolts and depending on how new your hub is or if you have a replacement uh, might be a good time to go ahead and replace it because uh, I, don't know, I just don't like going back and forth and taking things apart over and over and over so good idea to replace the hub if uh, you know depending how old it is and why not this one is brand new essentially um, I just replaced it, put like 20 miles on the vehicle and come on now. <clears throat> there we go. So, there you go. And here we have the new lowering spindle I'll bring it up to the old spindle and see if you can tell how the difference is okay something like that and something like that so essentially what has happened uh, if you can kind of see the difference here this hole for the uh, hub assembly is pushed up essentially so if you take note here this uh mounting bolt is right up against the top uh 90 degree angle here we've got maybe half inch there and uh this other original spindle doesn't have uh well that one has a lot more gap here so um uh, Essentially what happens is they'll uh, machine the new spindle to have the hole a little bit higher, therefore lower the vehicle. Um, what I'm going to do is mount the spindle onto the hub and then uh, mount the hub and spindle assemblies onto the vehicle. Seems to be a little easier considering the... Uh, axle shaft is in the way so let's get to it so there's the hub and spindle assemblies now together uh, these are labeled this one's the right hand side because we're working on the right hand side um, keep in mind that uh, if you decide to uh, put the spindle on the vehicle first along with the uh, A arm uh, you're not going to be able to put a socket on the upper bolt here so you can see it's pretty close to the upper mount so you have to use a wrench and uh other than that i like to use some of this uh anesthes stuff uh, i put some around the hub assembly and then some of the bolts just to make it easier to you know 
get out of there if I ever need to replace one or the other. Um, now we're gonna take this over to the vehicle and uh, start assembling some stuff. All right, so we're getting ready to put on the hub assembly here and uh, the spindle. Now, I don't know if you guys, or I don't know if I went over this, but I put a couple of zip ties when I was replacing the lower ball joint up here. So move the axle up towards the uh, sway bar and zip tied it so that it didn't get in the way or you know, fall on my hands. Now, you do wanna take this and kinda let it float there for a little bit to uh, get ready. I'm gonna take the nut out of the lower bowl joint and you do wanna have your jack handy because we're gonna need it to line up the upper A-arm, so. I find it easier to uh, line up the axle into the hub before we do anything else. So, do something like that. And finish lining up the spline. And grab the nut for the lower bowl joint. Put the nut in place. Boom. All right, so I've got the hardware in the upper A arm. Uh, I've snugged them down enough to uh, line up the um, alignment keys, but not enough to where the A arm can't move. So I'll come back and uh, torque those later on. Now we're gonna be um, lining up the uh, lower ball joint with the upper A arm here. Um, that's where we're gonna need the jack and um we're gonna start jacking that lower a arm up <clears throat> all right so when you start jacking up the lower a arm find a spot that isn't going to interfere with the spindle or the lower ball joint so i just went ahead and uh Scoot it a little forward on the A arm, lower one. Then, as you can see, we're coming up to the top one now. Go ahead and go a little more. We'll try that. And just still move this guy. Do one of those numbers. Cool. Right. Another thing you need to look out for is uh, the mounting hardware for the upper A arm. So once you uh, get this spindle swapped out and the uh, axle in place, you can clearly see that the upper bowl joint is not gonna have a whole lot of room in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this nut started. And here, all right, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. There is barely any room. Uh, we are going to have to trim the ball joint stem once we get the uh, cotter keyhole lined up and the ball joint fully seated. So this will be an 18. Um, I am going to round this down. I'll show you what we need to cut after that. And then uh, I'm probably going to hook the uh, tie rod up. We don't need to do any of that stuff. Finish the lower bowl joint. Uh, still loose. So I'm going to finish getting everything tight. And then once we're ready to cut the stem here, I'll show you how much we uh, actually have to cut out of it. So there's that. All right, guys. So I got the upper bowl joint uh, tight. As tight as I can get it for now. I kind of want to put a load on the suspension before I run it anymore. Um, you can see I got the, it's hard to see, yeah, there you go, got the cotter key hole lined up. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about, trimming the, the ball joint stem. So I'm going to go almost flush with the nut and that'll give us uh, 
at least like an eighth of an inch uh, gap there. Just so that the, uh, the axle isn't rubbing up against that, um, I'm gonna get the old saw saw and get one of the metal blades and zzz, real quick. And then um, uh, that should be it. All right now, so there you guys have it. Uh, let's see, let's see if we can get in there. That's roughly uh, about like an eighth of an inch and uh, we still have enough clearance to run that um, cotter key through the through the nut. So that uh, that should be enough enough room at least to uh, to get that done. And let me see. Here's the the rest of the stem. I don't know. That's probably like eighth, almost a quarter of an inch off of that stem so there you go that's what you got to do all right guys so it's a little late uh, hopefully the camera can pick this up but uh i finished lowering the front end of the tahoe uh, i ended up not swapping out the torsion keys still need to get uh get an alignment but i did swap out the wheels for some uh ltz uh, Tahoe wheels and uh, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with uh, how it looks it's uh, sitting pretty level right now um, other than uh, having to get an alignment I still gotta drive it around make sure everything settles and double triple check everything but I do I do like how it looks and uh, we still got a little room in case I wanted to get a bigger wheel or you know different wheel and tire setup so uh, that's gonna be it for the junker tahoe lowering kit so if you guys found this video helpful don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see a lot more uh content on the old tahoe and maybe some stuff on the obs